All right, we're live. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Tuesday, June 8th, 2021 Board of Selectmen's meeting. Um, let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Kyle, our new intern for the summer, do you mind leading us in the pledge? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, great. And before we get started, I just want to say how wonderful it is to see everyone's face Please without a mask. So for those of you that may not, may not have seen it, you can come into Town Hall, obviously, still. If you're vaccinated, you don't need a mask. We're welcoming citizens back in for um, citizens' input and visitors for other agenda items. So um, with that, I think we have one citizen here for citizens' input. Uh, my name is Bob Foster. I'm at 9 Bentwood Street. Um, I'd like to uh, bring this to the attention of the selectmen, even though I, I, um, I and my neighbors realize this is a, uh, a planning board issue and will be decided by the planning board. Um, we feel that the, it's unique in that it, it in some ways, um, sets the stage for, I think, development of uh, what I'll call interstitial spaces, or in, especially in, in um, what are now like historical areas of the town. So with that, I'll read the letter. Um, we, the undersigned, are writing to you to voice our collective concerns as neighbors and abutters to the Orchard Place development project. Um, at the time, COVID meeting restrictions uh, severely limited our ability to participate in the, in the normal process, but that's, that's been taken care of. And um, the uh, official planning board meeting will be the 24th of June. Um, the proposed development project involves construction of a multifamily building in the center of a block of 100 plus year old historic homes, which are predominantly single family. As neighbors and abutters, we have the following objections to the project. The proposed site has no roadway uh, frontage and is surrounded by the backyards of seven to eight homes on all sides, uh, with additional homes experiencing a neg negative visual impact. Access to this, uh, what we see as an island development, is via private way, which is currently serving as a driveway and parking area for a homeowner. The lot is small for this type of development with the resulting building and pavement covering most of the property. It requires the planning board to approve multiple variances to allow it to go forward. Due to the undersized lot and pavement requirements, all vegetation, including at least two mature healthy trees, uh, one enormous copper beech, are going to be removed, resulting in what we see as a barren lot. The impacts to us as abutters include a lack of privacy, safety concerns for the increased traffic in the middle of our backyards, and many small children who currently play within feet of the access road, and reduced property values from what will be an obviously out of place development in all of our backyards. We believe the town will also be negatively impacted by this project, more suited for Cambridge or Boston, right in the middle of one of the few remaining historical blocks in Foxborough. All of us take great pride in our historical neighborhood and maintain our homes and properties in that light. If allowed to go forward by the town of Foxborough, we would take this development as a direct affront to our efforts to maintain the historic importance and character of the neighborhood. And it's undersigned by um, 16 households, approximately 30 people. Great, thank you. And um, just for anyone that's following the issue as, long, as well as the rest of the board, that is on the June 24th planning board agenda, so there'll be more to come. More to come on that. It's a Thursday night. Thanks so much for hearing me. Well, thanks for uh, presenting it yeah. uh, to the community. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you both. All right. Anyone else send in anything yeah. for citizens input remotely? I have to do a quick check, but I don't believe so the last time I checked. You want to move on to the COVID update now? Okay, yeah. So, so while she's looking at that, so for now, since some people may be comfortable coming in in person for citizens input and some people may not feel comfortable, we will allow either citizens input to come in at the email address printed on the agenda or people are welcome to come in for citizens input in person for the near future unless things change. Um, There's nothing. Okay, great. So the next item is the COVID-19 update and we talked about, we'll probably, we may pull back on this to like a monthly update. I think last time I checked we were at one, I don't want to steal Bill's thunder, but we were at one case in the community. so. Um, while it's still obviously top of mind, I think we may be able to, to pull back on these updates a little bit, so. That's right, so that, that is, and that was just basically my report is that we are down to one case. Uh, there was no additional deaths and, and uh, since the beginning of the, uh, of the COVID-19 impact, we had uh, a total of two people that, were, that lost their lives as a result of that. So we're 
fortunate but unfortunate for those for folks that, that didn't survive it. But we do uh, are glad to see that we're on the other side of this uh, situation and that uh, we're, we're uh, most assuredly moving in the right direction and, and putting people in, back into, into where they should be and, and uh, hopefully in this very safe and continued safe environment here in the community. Yeah. All right, great. Any questions on the COVID-19 update? All right. Um, the next item is a public event application for Foxborough CrossFit Road Race. And Christine, and she's attending. Remote. Okay, great. We have the presenter here virtually. Do you mind just introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about the event? I think you're just on mute still. There you go. There we go. Hi. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> yes. Hi, I'm I'm Chris Champa. Um, and I am um, at CrossFit Torque in Foxborough. Uh, we had put in an application to run a 5K road race on August 15th. Uh, we are going to do it at Schneider Electric on a Ponset Street. That approved that location has been approved by their facilities manager, Ed Pallone. I have um, all documentation. The application has been put forth to the town. Um, the latter part of April, we passed in a hard copy. I've been in communication with Ms. Lang and also Mr. Robinson uh, with the Board of Health. And I'm here for any, I'm not sure, like if I'm supposed to present anything additional um, outside of the application or if there's any questions that I should be um, ready to answer. I think the only thing I would just call out, thank you for your application, it was very complete. And you know, you guys are our first road race since the restrictions have been lifted. And thank you for the COVID safety plan. It's something that you guys didn't have to do, but you really you know, worked to get that turned in. So um, really appreciate that. It's the typical, I'd call it the typical route we see in town. Um, it looks like everything's in order here. So any questions from the board? No, just uh, a, go ahead, Doc. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say it, it's kind of good that they did it anyhow. I mean, hopefully we don't see anything going the other way. But if it did, at least, at least it would probably be something that we could still go forward with, with with some type of COVID restriction. So it's kind of good that they're there just in case. I don't think we'll need it, but it, yeah, but agree. It's, it's nice yeah. that it's done. Yeah. Yeah, my, you already answered my question. It's the typical. Um, the typical Schneider route. Yeah. Five K route. Okay. Okay. Um, and is there anything else that I need to do? We were hoping to get approval, and upon approval, we were going to begin to market. The interesting thing about this road race is that we are going to donate some of the proceeds to the Foxborough Public Schools uh, Nutrition and Fitness Program. We've been in contact with the superintendent. Um, it's just going to be that we will just send a check after the event to them, and but. Prior to that, obviously, we want to start marketing the event. So will I get something written in approval, or should I expect something by per, a specific date so that we can move forward with our marketing? We'll take our vote right here tonight, so you'll be all set. You know, you may just want to familiarize yourself. If you guys haven't done a race before, just, you know, the, the, the rules in town about putting up signs on, you know, public property and stuff, just, just follow the rules. Um, and I'm sure Barry Ringler, right? He's the one that's in charge of the signs and everything. Can, can answer any questions if you, if you have any questions about that. Okay. So I will receive information about the details of expectation. Yep, Chris, it's Katie Lang. Hey. Oh, um, hi. Sorry, I'm on Zoom. Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll be in touch tomorrow, and I'll just connect you with um, uh, Deputy Chief Noonan who can kind of just make sure we're all set in terms of like okay. roadblocks. Um, and I'll have, um, after the board takes their vote, I'll um, have something in writing for you tomorrow morning. Okay, all right. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this. Thank you for we're organizing excited. the event. Any other questions? Otherwise, I think we're ready for a motion. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve the public event application for the CrossFit Road Race on August 15th, 2021. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, you're approved. Good luck. Okay. All right, <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Katie, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Madam, Madam Chair, just uh, I didn't want to muddy up the, the, the efforts here, but yeah. uh, just to let you know that the, uh, the Board of Health has, has officially notified us that plans are no longer required. So yeah. uh, I know that you, you required one for this one. This is perfectly fine. It's glad, glad we did it. 
But just so you know, going forward, there is no requirement from the Board of Health anymore for, for COVID plans. Yeah, I think they'd already started it, just the background. Exactly. So we, we figured we might as well, might as well make use <clears throat> of it. That's why I didn't want to say it before you <coughs> the vote because yeah. already, it was already going to go anyway. So. Yeah. And right. that letter is from the Board of Health is in board docs under this particular race so that you right. know. Um, yeah, that was the first one. Yeah. Yep, perfect. <laughs> Thanks for being the guinea pig on the application after COVID. <laughs> Thank you. All right, thanks. All right, so we're a little bit ahead of schedule on the common traffic trial pattern. We have Lance, we have Paige, is Chris, and we have Chris. Chris. And we have Chris, aren't All you? All right, I think we're ready to start, and then we'll turn it over to you guys to give us an update. All right, Chris, uh, do you want to bring up the slides? Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We do have a few slides to walk through. Um, so I'll share my screen and walk through them as Lance uh, talks about them. And let me. All right. Yeah. That's it. There we go. That looks good. All right. All right. Um, so we just wanted to, you know, as promised, we wanted to give you guys an update on the uh, traffic uh, modifications uh, on the common rotary. Um, uh, so just a, a brief update sort of in the details and the timeline just to refresh everyone. Um, April 4th, we received grant funding through the Massachusetts Shared Street Program. Um, this was something largely uh, that was, you know, we were kind of helped with, through with uh, Kittleson and Associates. Um, they, uh, you know, we've made connections with them. We we're really just looking for, uh, you know, grant funding for crosswalk uh, lighting at the time. But this kind of, this specific grant wasn't really geared towards that. It was more, um, you know, it's it supposed to be more holistic um, and larger focused. Um, but Kittleson thought that the common rotary would be a good fit for it. Um, the state agreed and uh, thought it was worth further evaluation. So we were awarded the uh, grant funding to do so. Um, on May 17th, uh, the trial started. Um, we've since made various modifications and adjustments as issues sort of came to light, um, just basically removed some sections of curbing, uh, you know, adjusted uh, the location of some of the cones just to uh, uh, accommodate some of the large vehicles that were going through there. Um, we posted an online survey on May 25th to June 1st, and then uh, the uh, Kittleson Associates actually did a pedestrian intercept survey on May 27th at the local farmer's market. Um, to collect some feedback from people who are more, um, you know, actually walking around the common and, you know, participating. Um, and then on June 3rd, we had a subcommittee review meeting um, just to, you know, dig deeper on some of these issues before the board selectman meeting tonight. Um, so next slide, just to review some of the results, you should have received um, a larger packet with a much more detailed uh, review of the online survey results. But um, it was posted on social media, town's page, local discussion group, and on the town webpage. We got about 405 total responses, uh, 338 of which uh, identified as local residents. Um, 95.5% 90 90, of the respondents said uh, their primary uh, you know, interaction with the common was just driving alone. 72.5% uh, of those drivers uh, don't really typically walk or bike. And then the respondents' uh, use of street parking was, you know, primarily never or every few months, um, so not very often. Um, of those respondents, only 14% uh, liked the new parallel parking, so not very many, obviously. Um, and, uh, you know, a larger but still not majority was 42.4% uh, of the respondents uh, preferred the lane changes on South Street. Um, so if we compare this to the pedestrian intercept survey on May 27th, um, Obviously, a much smaller sample. Uh, it wasn't, you know, as many, uh, it's hard to get a larger reach in those kind of things. We had 27 total responses there, 18 were local residents, um, you know, but it's much more. You can see kind of the breakdown as much 63% of the, you know, only drive. So it's a little bit better um, in terms of walk usage. And, uh, you know, more people did use the parking. Um, but here we have 43% of the people uh, surveyed like the parallel parking and 50% like the uh, lane cheese on South Street. Um, so that brings us um, to some of our recommendations. So the recommendations we're looking to make based on sort of the some of the discussions with the subcommittee, um, and I wasn't there at the time, unfortunately. So Chris, you can kind of, and Paige, you guys can fill me in because you guys actually were able to sit through it. I unfortunately was at my brother's wedding, so I couldn't go. But um, uh, so what we're looking to do with potentially is um, at least probably keep the island um, 
because we believe it's working at the uh, South Street and Central Street area in terms of preventing cross traffic from making, making that dangerous merge area. But we're looking to do so we want to do kind of a, a stepped approach where at first we'd probably only either paint it in or maybe do a red brick in print situation, possibly add some narrow delineators down the center line. So it wouldn't really be um, as much as a large impact as you're seeing now with all these cones and curb bump outs. Um, we could potentially later on and then upgrade that to like a traversable curb kind of situation to give it some kind of dimension if need be. Um, so Chris, do you want to expand on that at all? Um, yeah, so you know the thought the thought is that obviously with all the cones and barrels and the, and the you know five inch tall rubber curbing, you know vehicles can't drive over it. Um, you know it's it's something that as we've had to move some of that curbing out of the way, we've seen that you know it something level of the ground would be helpful for the larger vehicles um, but we want to make it clear that this is not something you should be driving over um, you know a, a stamped concrete or a stamped asphalt is going to have some texture to it it's going to have you know a little bit of that kind of rumble strip feel to it um, where you you do it once and you go ah, I, I shouldn't be driving over that um, without you know impacting our plow operations or any of the the larger operations that we have um, you know, smaller impact to game day traffic, maneuvering around the common, um, those types of things. So that was kind of what the, the subcommittee discussed. Um, and, you know, for me, the, in the subcommittee, the red brick imprint um, is a nice, a nice feature, a nice aesthetics to the common um, versus something that's just granite curbing and concrete. So that was kind of the thought process on that. And, and again, if, if down the line, you know, we get do this work, with striping and, and the imprint, and it doesn't do what we think it's gonna do, then we have some options you know, down the road to add in um, you know, a T100 curbing, which is similar to the curbing down on the roundabout on Fox, Foxborough Boulevard um, for the truck pad. Um, you know, it lets the larger vehicles traverse over that as needed, but again, the smaller vehicles are gonna stay off of it. So that's the thought on the South Street and Central Street Island. Sound about right, Paige? Okay. <laughs> um, all right, so um, let's, we'll, we'll keep going. We got one or two more slides um, and then we'll open it up for discussion. Um, so the, uh, in regards to the parallel parking, so we're looking at uh, two different options here potentially, and this is something we'd like the board to consider tonight. Um, one option that was discussed was uh, continuing the parallel parking trial, but also adjusting the width of the uh, parallel parking spaces by adding an additional foot to each one. Currently they're eight foot wide and we would potentially adjust them to nine feet wide, um, but keep the existing um, travel lanes what they are, except at the, uh, you know, change them at the top of school street on the curve to 11.5. So that would um, still maintain the benefit of having that road diet effect um, that does slow people down associated with parallel parking, which is you know, a huge benefit to the pedestrians in that area. Um, but, you know, give the parallel parkers a little bit more, um, you know, space to be comfortable potentially. Um, the other option we're considering, or we'd like the board to consider is uh, reverting back to angle parking, but uh, with a three foot offset from the uh, existing curb location. Um, this, the three feet plus the existing uh, two feet gap from the fence line could potentially allow us to create like a uh, five foot pedestrian walkway. Um, and, uh, you know, we asked Kittleson to perform a uh, turning analysis, which, you know, showed that vehicles would still be able to stay within the uh, protected buffer area. So it looks like that's feasible. You know, we'd probably, again, want to do that on a trial basis. Um, you know, because either way, in either of these scenarios, we're going to be blacking out and restriping. So um, both are, you know, I, I don't think any more of an inconvenience to us on that perspective um, and in both cases we probably want we're looking at probably extending the parking that parking trail to July 20th meeting of the board of selectmen and considering it at that time uh, Chris do you want to add to that uh, you know I, I mean I think Lance covered most of it it's really you know there are two options um, in the subcommittee meeting we we had discussed continuing the parallel parking to see how the events at the common would actually work um, you know we, we saw we did get you know, two farmers market markets, and then one of the farmers market last Thursday was actually um, in conjunction with event an event at the theater, and those parallel parking spaces were full. I drove through there at 5:30, and I think I only saw one empty spot. Um, 
And what that does, like Lance said, it, it gives it that road diet traffic calming, you know, feel um, where you, you feel like you need to go slow around that, um, which is, is part of the, the project that we've put forward, you know, in this process. Um, although we have listened and, and as the selectmen that were in on the sub subcommittee have seen the comments um, that the residents just don't like it. So, um, you know, we're, knowing that and seeing that, we did reach out to Kittleson. They did do this turn analysis. Um, that's the picture down in the bottom right. Um, you can push that curb out three feet and be able to put a five foot sidewalk in there. And it keeps people in what was that back out area. Um, you know, put your, put your right about on the line so you're not going to impact traffic um, until you go to pull into and merge with the traffic. Um, so there's some benefit there. Uh, obviously, I think we know the, the people in town who. You know, spoken through survey and they they like that pull and parking it's an easier maneuver to pull in um, but it it does then leave 30 feet of pavement out there so it's nice and wide um, so people are going to feel like they can you know pick up their speed a little bit again so um, those are kind of the, the two the trade-offs the options that we have um, in front of the board tonight and i think that's kind of what we're looking for discussion on and and options on from from the board and if I could just chime in as the planner here, um, you know, always looking ahead. Um, one of the reasons that we're doing this is, and I've said this before, and I just want to reiterate, especially for the residents, you know, we have heard them and we, we do see what's said and we understand. Um, but two things, one, folks freaked out about the changes up at the top of the common and, you know, those shocking barrels and cones. And I think most of us would agree that that has been a tremendous benefit for traffic um, and it has also not hurt the, the appearance of the common. Um, and the other thing is is that we just haven't seen things activated up there. So if anything, I think extending it a bit would give us a chance to get you know some concerts on the common and the farmers market and the Orpheum going and, and really have a bustling up there to see how it works. Because when I was up there at the farmers market, I actually felt like it really worked. And I know people don't like the parallel and I get it. And I'm not even that strong of a proponent. But wor what worries me is what Chris mentioned just now is that 30 feet of pavement. And you can hear people zoom as they go around that corner at the top of the common, you can hear them accelerate and start to go. So we, there really is a trade off. And, you know, do we want this to be a thoroughfare and a quick cut through or do we want this to be a pedestrian safe area that soon is going to have a brewery and, you know, a, a more vibrant theater as we get back to life, you know, active restaurants. So we're trying to balance, again, the pedestrians that we haven't seen for 18 months with the traffic. So end of my soapbox but i want to remind everybody of why we're looking ahead and it's hard to picture it right now well yeah, i so think that's in, why too it was important to get um you know the the intercept that kittleson and Den and margaret did you know of actually talking to the people who are up walking and using the common and parking on the common versus you know an online survey where you know people can can voice their their opinion um, without actually getting feedback, um, you know, face to face. So Margaret, you know, did a great job. I was up there for a while with her of doing that um, intercept and having those conversations kind of one on one with people to help them understand what we're doing up there. So um, I think those are, oh, we got one more, to, one more slide, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, this slide is just uh, talking about, you know, future sort of expand, expansion of these. Uh, um you know explorations we've been doing over the common uh phase three would has i believe it's always been the consideration of mechanic and cocasset intersection here and potentially applying um a similar um island setup to what was done at south and central um, we're not looking at changing the parking over in this area um so maybe that'll make some people happy but um you know just potentially doing something like the uh, red stamp brick here as well potentially you know where we could explore it with just um you know, with the curb, the curbing or the, uh, you know, the uh, cones um, at first and just, you know, see, see what kind of impact it has. All right. And I will stop sharing my screen. All right. Well, thank you for that analysis. And, you know, for anyone who may be watching at home, oh, we're getting some feedback, Mike. Um, 
you know, the board got, I think it was a 42 page document with all the survey results, all the emails. So if you sent an email to Lance or to the selectmen, just know that we got them, we read them some. There was one citizen that even had like some cool ideas from, I think it was the UK or Europe or somewhere that they sent over. So um, that type of, you know, constructive feedback, I think was really helpful and just know that it was um, received and read. So I think we're here, you know, now, if I'm summarizing this correctly, to make a decision on the Salt Street side, which I've said before, I am not a fan of change, but I do think this one is working. I live off of Salt Street and I come up that way. And very often people would just blow from the inside lane down central and I definitely feel like it's a lot safer. Um, I think someone, I read somewhere in one of the comments, someone said, you know, what we're doing is just forcing people to follow the rules of what the road should be. You know, we're not a Cape Cod rotary like people reference that have two lanes coming in and out. Like it's just not how we're designed to be set up and compared to. So, you know, the, this design here really makes people follow those rules. And I like what's going on at the South Street end. Um, the parking, I think we've kind of heard loud and clear. And, you know, even myself, I think Paige and I stood out there twice and watched cars flip by and even, you know, sometimes I'm looking over my shoulder to get in the other lane and then I'm like, oops, I'm in that parallel parking spot if, if there was a car there. But you're right, it does slow traffic down. Um, so that's the other, the other decision in front of us tonight. Do we widen the parallel spots and try that out or do we go back to the old back out parking but there's just less room to back out which i think that was so wide because it was meant for pedestrians and backing out um so those are the the kind of two decisions and then you know chris do we have to move forward on the island or do we just want to move forward on everything at once once we decide the parking we can split it up. Um, that's so that's I'll know up, his to, recommendation. up yeah. to the board okay what's your and what's your recommendation as an engineer um <laughs> I would, I would probably take them separately. Okay. I, it, uh, the, if the one's easier, if the South Street, Central Street end is, is an easy win for the night, then that would be great to have that and get that out of the way and then have a bigger conversation about parallel parking and, and what the parking should look like. Okay. Yeah, and it, it kind of amazes me how many comments I've seen about how we're ruining the, co the common with barrels and cones. You know, the, it's never meant to be a common full of bar yeah. and barrels and cones. It's a very temporary It's a situation. temporary means to try this out. So, um, you know, for me personally, I, I think that that has worked. I'd actually be a little bit worried about the five inch curbing coming out and people driving over it again. Um, so it'll well, be interesting to see what happens well, there. Well, there is, because, because I, I, I love what, what they're doing at the uh, bottom with, for South Street and um, I've been cut off many times and because I am making that corner then to go down Cocasset. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my trial if I'm coming from Stop and Shop anywhere. And um, so I've been cut off many times. So I, Chris knew from the beginning, I said, I love whatever we're gonna do there that's gonna stop that. Um, I think his suggestion on something that's just, um, a um, like red brick or something that's textured to give that feel. I'm not sure if that is going to be because I think people will just do the same thing and drive over it. Um, but one of the things that we had asked is, if, you know, start with that because that's less intrusive. Um, you know, we most certainly want to make sure that um, when it's time to plow, that it's it's not hindersome to to them trying to get the common plow to push snow places. So I had asked if there was anything, um, I know in Summerfield uh, with the crosswalks, we put something up that's just portable until it's time for the snow to come and then we, it, it comes off. So like the five inches uh, there yeah, now? They, they said, well, whether it was anything that high or not, there is some portable things that we might be able to look into if um, it, but why not try the less intrusive first and if, it, and if that doesn't seem like it's it's doing what the cones and stuff are doing now, mm -hmm. we could maybe go to, to something else that um, that would be able to then come off, mm -hmm. in the, you know, when it's snow time. And, um, I, you know, and I said the same thing, except, except I was willing to, I think it might have been Seth came to the meeting and said, or someone said, how about if we give it another week or two in the trial? And I was willing to do that, because let's, let's just, you know, really give people more time. I couldn't bite myself on the parallel parking. Um, I'm a good parallel parker. It doesn't scare me to parallel park. 
I just, I just felt that narrowness. Um, I told them that I was trying so bad to drive around different times of day. You know, I might go a different way home, but decide to go around the common. Um, I, this morning, I watched a school bus come off of Maine, and um, and I know the measurements are there, so they should be able to do it. But not only did they cut where that first spot was, and I know if there was a car there, they wouldn't have, but um, the, the bus would have struggled a little bit, would have really had to slow down, I think. And um, so I myself right now couldn't bite on the parallel parking, but I was definitely willing to give it a more trial period mm -hmm. if just if that's what Chris thought. And then Chris sent me a text this afternoon that they had this other option they wanted to present mm -hmm. in um, about the, you know, and I was still, you know, we, we heard complaints about people getting the pull in parking, having to walk behind their car, then to access the common. No, they won't. Now they won't. Mm -hmm. I thought myself getting out of the car, if I had young children still to get out, opening those doors into the, the lane of traffic, I thought would be more dangerous than just having to walk walk behind. But like what they've come up now seems like a great idea too. Mm -hmm. And um, so that, that's really what my input was just from, from doing. But with that all being said, um, you know, everything has been done with engineers and to be able to work. It just, I'm just not sure if, um, I wasn't quite as comfortable with, with that, so mm -hmm. I love the new idea about keeping the pull-in parking, and um, my two cents with the, the whole time. I've been waiting since Chris did the top of the common to to find out what they were going to do with the bottom of the common to to stop that. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple other things. Um, Officer Fitzgerald was there. He brought a cu couple of things forward. Um, number one, that they could he could not find any pedestrian accidents um, on the common. I know Doc does a lot of walking and gave that last meeting gave us some feel that him feeling even a little more safe now. I, I think the only thing is we can't, we can do all of this. You can't control people not doing what they're supposed to do. When you see somebody approaching that crosswalk, you're supposed to stop. The, the pedestrian always has the right of way. So we can do all of this and if people don't follow the correct rules to drive, mm -hmm. it, it will never be safe. Yeah. So, Everyone's I mean, in such a rush now. You yeah, know, so. I think we can do what we can, yeah. but anyhow, my two cents, that, that's my two cents, and that's what I shared um, at the subcommittee meeting. And um, I do like the second, second, I, second idea of giving that a try with the pull-in parking myself. Yeah, I, that's kind of my gut too. But, and just to clarify too, we received a grant, so I know I've seen some comments about you know the money spent on this, and this was covered through a grant, and will continue to be right, Chris, with these adjustments too. So just to kind of put a lid on on some of those comments and make sure people understand that. So In, including flower pots, I including think. and flowers, all the flower pots. and flowers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've already had people asking about adopting <laughs> those next year. So <laughs> um, Ed, Doc, thoughts on you know if you want to do both pieces, just then we can take a vote. Yeah, I mean. Um... <laughs> I'm for putting that five-inch curving right away down there, but um, but I agree. Let's let's try the uh, red brick. Let's go for it. Uh, let's see what the cars do. Um, I agree with Steph. Cars is just going to drive over the brick. Yeah. Yeah. Can but we I, almost leave that for a little bit? Like, can we leave that middle part, Chris, just to like phase people out of it? <laughs> well, I'll be honest with you, Doc. That's that's where I was going the whole time, and then Chris started talking about the hindrance of, of plowing. And, uh, yep. and that's the only thing that made me say, okay, well, let's try the other way. Knowing that we could, we could go we there. Could go back. Or even if we train people until the snow, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, well, so uh, you know, the, the red brick. To that, uh, you know, in order to do that red brick, whether it's, you know, concrete or stamped asphalt or whatever it happens to be, you know, we're gonna have to work and get a contractor lined up, you know, make sure that we have funding available for it. Um, so it's something that we will certainly do this construction season if that's the you know what the board decides to do but that curbing will stay up there we can move some of the barrels we can reduce some of the cones um, so that it's not as cumbersome and, and you know daunting I guess um, we can pull some of that stuff out of there but that rubber curbing um, you know will stay in place at least until we get that work done and then we can leave some of the cones up there you know after the fact too just to carry it out and continue to get people to, to learn that that's what they're supposed to do when they go around the common. Right, and, I, and I'm all for that. As, as for the parking, 
Um, personally, we already know the um, angle parking works. I'd like to see the parallel parking with the changes Lance brought up uh, for a, a two or four week trial first. Uh, maybe with that extra space might make people a little bit more comfortable. But again, I know I'm uh, uh, um, saying it way too often, but as, as a person that walks down there three, four times a day, it is slowing down traffic, just like it's slowed down on Commercial Street. Anybody that drives Commercial Street at nine at night, they're doing 35 right to the stop sign because there's no cars there. But that's different during the day. With their cars parked on both sides, um, cars, just, cars slow down. They slow down once they get to Wall Street. And, uh, and I see that happening to some extent now on that side of the rotary. And I can't overemphasize slowing down and being courteous is an advantage to what we want in the downtown. Uh, you know, that 10 year plan page reminds us of every once in a while of the revitalization of downtown and that's to make it pedestrian and family friendly and that works. So I kind of I kind of understand the parallel parking thing, but at the same time it is working because it's slowing down traffic. People are just weary so they're driving slower and that's okay. And and I had brought up to Chris too like in Sol in front of Soul Street Pizza, it's the same thing. Parallel, parallel, kind of on a curve, but that feels okay. And it's really <laughs> like the width there that makes it kind of not, yeah, not feel okay said, there. And that's what's, you know, now in front of us too. Didn't Chris and Lance last time say that's a little bit wider though? It is, one? yeah. Oh, it is. That feels okay. right. See, that, it's the same thing. Right. But one feels right and one feels too narrow. So that's why we, you know, we have the second option. It's, it's only a foot, but I, it would feel I, a little wider. I, I'd like to see it tried. Yeah. Before we go back to, uh, angle parking because we know that that works. Yeah, yeah. Is that an easy enough shift for you guys too? Or are they all pretty tough shifts? <laughs> no, I mean we, it's just paint, black paint, and then more white and yellow. So we've got um, you know our highway crews ready to go. They're actually lining up to paint probably Thursday night, um, and then they probably have another night next week. So we can kind of sub out some of the work that they were, you know, planning to do crosswalks other, in other parts of town. You know and we can shift them to this. I've already talked to the highway supervisor about that. Um, so whether it's this week or next week, we should be able to get it restriped one way or the other. My only concern with that is though, then changing again is is like fatigue in all the different changes. You know, it's one way and then it's a little wider, then we're back to, par back to angled. So that's my only hesitation on that piece is just becoming kind of an irritant or confusion for, you know. That, I think that's why I want to, do the wider one yeah because all it is is just changing things a little bit yeah but the parallel parking still there people may not even notice that right that width change yeah. okay ed thoughts if, if you're done, done. Uh, certainly one of the issues that i notice up in the center of the community is the lack of speed signs at different locations for example, if you're coming up Central Street to go into the Common, you don't hit the 20 mile per hour sign until you are reaching Wall Street. And I've noticed some other signs uh, indicating the same thing about trying to slow vehicles on their approach even before getting closer to the Common. And you know, whether there's a consistency and Chris, for you to look at that to see if we could enhance the signage issue along with, you know, the changes that were discussed about installing uh, some areas of brickwork that also, I think, would help moderate speeds kind of around the common. Because people coming off of 140 on Main Street coming into the common, uh, there are a lot of times as I'm approaching uh, that area as I'm coming up from Mechanic Street to go around the common, uh, they're still coming through at a hefty clip. Madam Chair. So uh, along with um, Ed's suggestion, um, and Chris, this is to you and Lance, I noticed in some communities now that they're actually going to uh, paint in the pavement itself 
to uh, slow people down. So in other words, put a 20 mile an hour pavement marker right inside, the, right on the pavement itself, as opposed to putting the signs, which uh, tend to slow people down when they see it. Um, and even what, even putting additional arrows, you know, slow arrows that that slow the pavement, down, the uh, the traffic down a little bit. I don't know. Have you thought about that option at all? Yep. Um, actually, we were talking. Lance and I were talking about a little bit of that today. Um, Lee and I had. When we talked Friday about it, that was something that she had mentioned was the people coming in from Main Street, um, you know, and, and the feel that they're coming in, you know, faster than, than they should be. Um, so we had talked about doing exactly that, build, you know, painting 20 miles an hour on the ground as you're coming into the common. Um, also looking at working with the police department. Um, they have a variety of capabilities now to, to pick up that data. Um, and we typically, when they put out their their data collection units, you know, they're seeing that to the eye, it seems like somebody's going, you know, 10 miles, 15 miles, and they're going 50, you know, over the speed limit. Um, but when they collect the data, it's it's that feeling. Um, so I think that's something we can work with them, uh, the chief um, Ken Fitzgerald and, and Officer Buckley, who who does a lot of that speed collection data for them um, to actually do a study up there and see what people are doing. That way we get a baseline for you know the trial where we stand now and then we can do some of these improvements and see if they're if they have an impact too and do another study later on i think that's a great idea chris and you know 20 has been the speed limit forever is that even the right speed limit it, should it be i don't know 15 i'm just throwing things out there but then we can look at all that um so the the issue with speed limits is they're they're regulated so it, it's not something where the the white signs with black text are the ones that are regulatory signs. So that's what the police department can enforce. Okay. We can we can choose to put up the yellow advisory signs, and we can put them up at five miles an hour, ten miles an hour. Um, they're not enforceable, but it does tell people, hey, there's something different about this, you know, stretch of road. You should be going slower. Um, you know, so. We could do those types of signs if that was something that the board wanted to do. The regulatory signs, the lowest we could go is 25 miles an hour. So the fact that they're 20 now is is pretty good. Okay. Um, you know, we can't can't actually go lower than 25. You end up having to do speed studies, and they're actually set at 80 the 85th percentile of how fast people are going. So every time you bring up doing a speed study, and you end up with you know speed limits that are actually going to be higher than what's posted okay sounds like um. we'll leave that as is and um, <laughs> don't tell yeah, people about the yellow for. signs i didn't know that um, never mind <laughs> keep that secret but um yeah I, I do think we try to do things on the pavement though i you know there was a very intentional effort to there was a lot of sign clutter on the common and obviously mm -hmm. speed limit signs are important but it becomes clutter where people just don't notice it anymore so as much as we can put it on the pavement or you know even install something on main street because people are coming in coming in hot off main street now that they know that they kind of have that clear path. So whatever we can do to slow traffic down there too, I think will will help. So in front of us, we have we have the two decisions really. Um, I think there's three motions, but two decisions. If we feel we're ready. Um, so do we want, it sounds like we want to handle them separate. Mm -hmm. So I think it sounds like we're ready to move on the first motion, the motion to install a permanent diverter island on South Central Street. From an engineering perspective, everyone agrees it's working. Um, we haven't had any crashes. I know I asked Chris about that. There was no car accidents. I feel like the pedestrian exposure, um, to me, feels safer crossing there. Paige, I know you've done a lot of walking up there too. Um, so, I think when all the cones and when the, all the orange is gone yeah. too, I think people, their their eyes are, they're trying to um, maneuver around yeah. it. And like, I wonder if they're catching the pedestrians because they're so, yeah. you know, with, with everything. So I, I think once those go down and it just, the whole area looks more appealing, yeah. I think um, I think it, it'll it'll definitely work. I agree. And, and there's not a crew that's rolling in tonight to, to throw this up. It's going to take some time if, if things ever yeah. really went bump. So... Um, it sounds like we're ready for a motion there, and then after that, let's move on to the parking down at the north end. Okay, so we'll, we'll get the first one done. Yeah. Okay, motion to install permanent diverta island on South Street slash Central Street. Second. 
Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right. All right. All right, so now let's move on to the discussion. You know, we really have two things in front of us. You know, I think whichever one we decide, we're going to extend till July 12th. But do we want to widen the spaces to make it feel a bit more like in front of Cell Street Pizza? And then if that doesn't work, we can always go back to um, the angled parking. I think Doc had a good suggestion that it feels, I think it may not even be as noticeable to people. Um, and then if it doesn't work, that's exactly what a trial is for, and that's what we're doing. And if we need to roll out another survey, um, you know, we can. But I do think we need to get ahead of the messaging too, that you know, this was approved and here's the timing and you're gonna see the barrels go down and here's why. So as much as we can get ahead of the messaging, I think that we should just be proactive with that to avoid any undue, you know, confusion. So, so I, I would make a suggestion that, you know, uh, at least in board docs, sort of combining uh, the second and third one Yes, into and, one motion. And I just want clarification, if you guys don't mind. So where we're widening eight to nine feet, are those the parallel spaces on both sides? And are we making any adjustment to the driving lane or is it just the parking spots? Chris, you know, yeah. Yeah, so those would be, the parking on both sides would be widened from the eight to the nine feet. So that lets the people that are actually parking, giving them an extra eight, an extra foot um you know to feel safe coming out and then we would restripe we're gonna have to restripe anyway so we'll make sure that the spaces are the travel lanes are 11 and a half feet okay we're so right now as now? you come in into the two lanes you know they're narrow they're they're about 10 and a half feet as you come in at that point um from main street so we'll widen those out to 11 and a half and hold the 11 and a half feet so really you're gaining you know a two foot extra two feet on both lanes and parking spaces on both sides of that lane line so if i'm understanding it right it's four feet one in each parking spot and one in each lane is that so four Correct. feet total yep. okay Chris, okay where, where does that four feet come from so we'll push the the parking on the common side those parallel parking spaces will get pushed closer to the common the planters will move oh so the okay. planters and will what move if, towards the where, common and where it um where it kicks out the sidewalk kicks out there's no parking there. That's all striped okay. off as yep. um, no parking. You have to have a buffer by the crosswalk, so yep. you can't park right up next so to the no crosswalk. Park, right along there, there's no parking on either side. Correct. Correct. Okay. So, does that mean the the lanes of traffic are going to narrow there? Widen. Oh, widen. I, no, no, no. But I mean, but but the, what's what's there's a planter. I'm trying to think of vision. So everything will just the planters will shift over and everything. The spot will widen a foot. Each travel lane will widen by a foot each. And but then where the there's no parking on either side now, what is there? Is, is, so that, is, there, is there a that planter buffer. after the after the kick out? Uh huh. Do, do you know? Is it, yep. Okay. And what about on the other side? Same thing. There's a painted buffer on both sides, um, the common side and the storefront side, on both sides of the crosswalk. So, so those will just change the traffic to move a little bit there or no do, do you know what yeah, I mean? it'll the traffic shift will shift a little yes. bit but i don't yeah. think you'll know because the lines yeah. will be repainted okay it will yeah it'll still be a it'll still be a straight shot once okay. you come around the corner from main street and you get into the straight section it'll still be a straight shot okay. the lanes will be straight the parking on the common side will just be pushed further in towards the common okay so everything everything will shift but you're not going to see a shift in the lanes halfway down by the crosswalk and if you guys can just make sure that you also just coordinate with Bill's office to make sure we get on this kind of positive PR campaign, like, hey, you know, we heard you, we're widening this, we're seeing if it works, if it doesn't work, here's the plan. This is gonna go to July 20th. Just, you know, anything we can do to get out ahead of it and avoid the tsunami of um, questions, I think will be helpful. All right, so it sounds like we are ready for motion. Now our motion, only has eight to nine feet on the par on the parking spots. I think it also needs to say that the travel lanes go from ten and a half to eleven and a half. Um, so, with the motion that you have there, can you just add the travel lanes will go from ten and a half to eleven and a half, and then it would be the second and third motion. Mm -hmm. You ready Is for that me correct, to go, Chris? Yeah, I captured it right. Okay. Yep. All right. Great. Okay. Motion to widen parking spaces from eight feet to nine feet to provide additional buffer 
as well as travel lanes from 10 and a half feet to 11 and a half feet during a, an extended trial period. Through July 20th. Through, through July 20th? Yeah, it was gonna be a second motion. We could just wrap it into one. Yeah, that's what Perfect. I thought. Perfect, yeah. okay. okay. Through, through July 20th, 2021. Second. Any further discussion? Everyone comfortable with that? Yeah, very comfortable. Okay. Very much. Okay, great. All right, yep. all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, great. Thank Thanks, guys. Thanks for all your work on this. I know it's it's been a lot. We really appreciate it. Madam Chair, I, I know that Paige may be leaving shortly. Are, are you coming to stay? Are you sticking around tonight, Paige, or are you, are you done for tonight? All right, we'll no, move to something you. else after then. Just hold well, on a little bit. Yeah, we just, <laughs> want to, we just want to hold on for a second. Do you, do you want to, uh, to congratulate Paige for something that she's Yeah, to so we're going to move down to an item listed in selectman's update while Paige is with us um, and i have worked so much and got to know Paige so well over the last year and a half and i can't say enough fabulous things about her um she is a doer like if you want to get stuff something done just mention an idea to this woman and she <laughs> will like map it out it's just she gets stuff done i love that about her so um, it looks like the Rotary Club also recognized that. So I'm going to put you on the spot and read this letter from the Rotary Club of Foxborough. The Foxborough Rotary Club is delighted to let you know we have selected you as this year's Paul Harris Award awardee. This international award is given by Rotary Clubs to persons who have, in their personal or professional life, demonstrated a significant commitment to service in their community. This is the Rotary's highest honor for the work that seeks to improve the lives of others and its select group. Recipients have included, among many others, President Carter, astronaut Jane Lovell, and Jonas Salk. On June 28th, the Fox River Rotary Club will be having an evening dinner which will include the Paul Harris Awards presentation um, for the contributions that you have made to the town of Foxborough. So they have invited Paige to dinner and recognized her and we just wanted to make sure that we took a moment during our meeting to congratulate you and recognize you for your wonderful contributions as well. So thank you, Paige. Thank you, Leah. Thank you very much. I'm, I don't even know what to say. So. <laughs> First time I've seen her speechless since I've known her, by the way. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say true. a little something, Paige, so you don't have to. How's that? For the five years I've been on this board, I've just been totally amazed with the work that you do, Paige. Um, uh, you've done a phenomenal job. We were very lucky when uh, you came on board here at Foxborough and the changes we see here um, downtown and the projects you have going uh, are tremendous. And uh, 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 recognition well deserved. Thanks, Doc. Thank you very much. Agree. You're a rock star, Pete. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. And I love I love working with all you. I mean, honestly, it really is working in Foxborough. Um, it's just there's something special here. So thank you so much for everything because you really do make it easy to enjoy and and it's a great town. So thank you. All right. I know you'd love to hang out with us all night, but <laughs> <laughs> no. I think Good that's night, all we have thank for you. So congratulations. Congrats. Hi. All right, so I know I'm kind of bouncing around, but at least we can let Paige go. So the next item is the meals tax update of policy. Um, so this is an item that's been kind of kicking around, I'd say, since a little bit before town meeting and then came up again at town meeting. I see we have Mr. Quinn here, um, who, who also spoke about this at town meeting. So from my perspective, this agenda item, we want to really talk about three things. And let me know if I if there's anything I missed or if there's anything that anyone else has to add. Um, but with COVID, um, there was, you know, some lost revenue from meals tax. And we're, when meals tax were, um, were put in place, the money was to go to OPAB and the roads. So no one anticipated COVID. We've now realized, number one, there's probably some language cleanup that we need to do to the policy. It is a little gray. Everyone knows and remembers from town meeting that, you know, that money was slated to go there. But when you look at the policy, it's a little bit gray. Um, another question that had come up, um, which Mr. Quinn had asked about what payments have been made for 2021 20, and then going forward for 22. And then a third piece is where does that money go? So we get it quarterly and we pay it, is it twice a year? We get it, it's four times a year. Four times, we get it four times a year and we make a payment four times a year? Okay. So, you know, you make, can- Make a payment to the investment four times a year. Four times a year, right, okay. Yeah. So you can imagine there's, there's these sums of money that come in and are kind of, 
for, for this year, they didn't go into an investment. They they went into free cash, which I think from talking to Bill now, we understand that was different just for this one year. So do we need to set up something like a reserve fund? It sounds like that may be covered. I want to hear what the board thinks. Um, and we may continue this discussion if we, you know, I think we'll have a policy likely to update, which will um, naturally continue this conversation when Seth gets back. I know he had some questions about it too. So that's kind of the discussion that I want to frame around this agenda item for tonight. So much. I, I just would like to sort of clarify a few things and sort of help the discussion so that you can all uh, be in a better position to uh, to deliberate over this. But so there are a couple of things that you should all be aware of. First of all, um, the the way we normally handle have handled this, and we've you know, going back to 2018, we moved the um, the fund into a, a separate investment company called uh, with a company called Bartholomew, who uh, and and it's interesting to note by the way that I saw the statement. Uh, return statement that came came to us this afternoon and I was looking and, and studying this a little bit and um, since since it's been with Bartholomew we went from an eight million dollar return to which will be probably by the fall close to 14.7 million so we've up we're up almost 80 percent in terms of the investment in investment return which is a and that's only a three-year per period so it's a pretty good return in terms of where that investment is going um, what's also interesting is that is that up until this past year we, we took the more uh, conservative approach of saying, look, we're not going to make any commitment to payment this year because we, don't, we know that the revenues are off, and in fact, they are. I mean, we've, we, we know at this point in time we're around four to $500,000 in terms of our, our collections, and we'll do another payment this month, which would, would hopefully we would think would be probably better than, than most months, a quarter prior to this, this month, uh, because of the uh, actual return to the investor, the, uh, people returning to restaurants and, and, pe and people dining out, et cetera. So we're going to see in, a tick up, obviously, in those revenues. So I'm going to say conservatively that the number is probably anywhere from six fifty to seven hundred thousand dollars for the for the year that we normally would take in somewhere between one and one point one million dollars. So what we would, what I would propose to do is that even though the money will is, is sort of is a, actually a local receipt, not a, if it doesn't become free cash until it gets certified by the state. So what will happen is that um, we normally have, up until now, have, have had an article that would go that would be done at town meeting, which I think Bob remembers that as an article that would be done, and we didn't do that this year, uh, but we and we haven't done it for this for this fiscal year 22 because we officially hadn't come out of COVID until just this past week. So what I would recommend that we take is two steps. One is to uh, is to take the money that we collected from the meals tax. Put it into the investment fund um, at town meeting in the fall, which would then make the the the, the, uh, the 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 payment for this year consistent with what we've done in other years, and then also uh, actually then uh, put an article in place that would say that we would take a look at actually the investment return that we uh, will probably see or the or the payment that we'll see probably in September for the first quarter of this fiscal year, which will only give us an indication of where we are. Uh, and what we can expect for a payment for uh, for all of the fiscal year 21, 22 rather, which will take start taking place on July 1st. So we'll see at that point what that number might be. We can then project out and take a look at what that, that number might be and then ask for an article that would be uh, say make a $1.1, $1 million uh, payment into the fund and that will allow us to continue to make payments as they come in into the fund on a regular basis. And then basically return back to the to the normal cycle that we've been in until up until now. So um, it is interesting to know, by the way, that um, if you go back to 2012, when we started making payments uh, based on the policy of the, for the, towards the OPEP and, and what we've done uh, in terms of paying off, off the, uh, paying our roads, et cetera, that, you know, the, the current policy says that you shall, you shall supplement that as well. Um, Again, that's something we should take a look at because this is not a year to supplement that payment given some circumstances, but there is some, some good news on, on the forefront. The, the, the payments that we've made so far to that fund are actually $300,000 to the good in terms of what we've collected versus what we've put into the investment fund. And I mean that in the sense we've paid more from free cash uh, and uh, other funds into the, the OPEB as well as the, the, the road investments which to the good of $300,000 more than we, we've actually taken in. So we've actually, we're still ahead of the schedule in terms of what we've actually done, and that's as of 2020. So 
Um, the good news that I want to report to you is that just as this is this literally came out this afternoon, uh, one, we got more direction from the federal government this afternoon that we do believe now that OPEB payments are eligible from the federal money coming in, which means that we could maybe supplement whatever money we made from the meals tax to get us back up to our ARC payment, which would then bring us uh, back to put us back on schedule. That coupled with the fact that we have uh, about an 80 percent return just in the past three years will put us way ahead of the schedule of where we should be in terms of paying down the, paying down the OPEB liability. That means that um, the last I checked, um, the last and uh, the, the first time we talked about this, the payment schedule was to be around 2038. The last, uh, the last schedule indicated it would be down to 2035. I'm hoping that it's at least to 2035, maybe even less, which means that we'll be paying down that long-term liability much faster than anybody, uh, almost virtually anybody in the Commonwealth for that matter. So we're way ahead of that schedule, and, we can, and I would strongly recommend that we continue on that schedule as well. So that's the latest information I wanted you to all have. Uh, there is some language uh, errors uh, or issues that we need to address in the policy because no one anticipated that we'd have a pandemic like we just did in the past year and that we would be in that kind of situation where we had to take a look at, at uh, our, our uh, payments uh, to that schedule given the circumstances that we, that we weren't collecting the money. So I think that's really what I wanted to, wanted to put out there for discussion. And the, and the payment, the, the changes to the policy are minimal. But one thing that we don't address is, is how much money we put towards roads each year. You'll note that if you take a look at the schedule of payments that we made over the past, since 2012 until now, until 2020, um, that uh, we made a sizable payment towards roads in, in 2015. I think it was almost $900,000 went to roads, and that was a significant improvement on the road system here in town. People know that the roads have been improving rather significantly over the past several years. So we don't know that we don't think we're going to need that, but um, but something's a conversation we want to have with Chris and, and with Lance about you know what they think we need to be putting into the into that fund to keep that keep that going. So with that, I'll turn it back to you, Madam Chair. Looks like Bob's got a few points that he wants to make uh, and to add to this uh, this conversation. Speak or <laughs> yeah, come up to the table. Tell us your name, where you live. Yes. I mean, we all know, but tell everyone at home. Uh, Brian, Quinn. Oh, Brian, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I apologize, oh, Bob, sorry. Brian. Get golf, John, Bob, whatever. Um, so just a couple of points, I guess, that I have. Um, and my understanding of the ARC payment mm -hmm. is that we do an evaluation, right? Yeah, every, every two years. Every, every two years, right. Right? Yeah. We've got they up this year. determine an amount that we are supposed to make as a town to that liability. That's correct. Correct? That's okay. correct. Actuarial evaluation? Yeah, actual, okay. It's an actuarial evaluation. That's correct. Um, that I think historically had been the 964000 that we had paid yeah, actually, prior to the COVID for a couple of years. I think, yeah, that's right. The last the last evaluation indicated should be around $960,000. Um, so in my mind, that's a payment that the town agreed to pay off this liability by 2038. Okay, so that we do this actuary evaluation every couple of years, <clears throat> we agree that, <clears throat> excuse me, that payment needs to be made. The meals tax was a nice way to fund that liability that we need to pay anyway. So that was the purpose of the meals tax. It took a couple of times to sell it, and the reason it passed was that the town decided it was prudent to pay off this liability, we'll use the meals tax, and we kind of kill two birds with one stone. We get the extra revenue and we can go straight to that. But in our town policies, it says we make, we plan to make this ARC payment every year. And the primary funding is supposed to be the meals tax. And if it's not funded through meals tax, the town still is making that ARC payment. Okay, so that's what our policies say. Um, and my understanding looking at the, and even alluding to what you just talked about, um, that our contribution through the actuarial evalua valuation went up from 964 to a million, over a million, mm -hmm. through the report through 2019. Right. So this assumption that we're paying it off in 2035 assumes 
we made a million bucks last year, which we didn't make, and assumes we're making a million bucks this year, which we well may well, make. Well, let me let uh, me just make, let me clarify that for you because we made the payment in 2020. Okay, understood. So, so the 2020, the only thing that hasn't been paid so far is the 2021 payment, which will be made in at the next town meeting. So I think that's so that will the 2021 payment will be made fiscal 21 payment will be made in in in, uh, in the fall town meeting which will then have which will no then payment us, skipped right we'll have no made, no payment skipped at that point okay okay so that's the assumption that we are we're going to go back and not not go back but we're going to the payment we skipped last yes. fiscal year right we are going to double up well it's actually pay. it's actually no it's actually this fiscal year we're still in fiscal 21 right now okay. So the fiscal for two weeks or three weeks exactly, but then in calendar twenty one, which will be October November yeah, this but, year. So we'll, fiscal year, we're yeah. not going to make a payment. Exactly for this fiscal year, we're okay. not going to make a payment. So we're now right. the next fiscal year. You're talking right. About, so but let me just clarify that point. So fiscal the fiscal twenty one payment will be made in the fall November of twenty of twenty twenty one, with still and then the other the second piece as I mentioned would be an article that would say, let's get back on the schedule so 2022 will be made as well. So we will not have missed any payments. Okay, so point. just to clarify, yeah. so you're saying in fiscal 22, right. we're gonna contribute roughly $2 million, a million from last year and a million? Well, the, 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 technically yes, but what's gonna happen is the money that came from 21 will effectively be available for us to pay for 21. And again, I yeah. whether it came from 21 or where it came from, I don't, you know, didn't necessarily care. I guess. But but I think what are we getting? We are getting back. Yes. To fully on the fully schedule. Fun, yeah, the fully on schedule. That's correct. But, but I think what Brian is bringing up is that we made that decision. So I wasn't on the board then, but I was just getting off Adcom because I had pulled my papers, but. The decision to just not fund it, I think, was just said was like, okay, we don't think the meals tax is going to be here, so we're not going to put it in the budget. When we're actually finding out, we weren't supposed to do that. Our policy says that that payment is to be made, and we get to use the meals tax. If there's only five hundred thousand in meals tax, then none of the four hundred and sixty is coming from town money. That the, our financial policy says it's supposed to be paid, and so. The, the little so, so problem can I, can I, I just, have is I need that to, I, need to, I need to clarify that, though, because yeah. I never said we weren't going to not make the payment. I said I would, we would make the payment based on what we collected. That was the issue. We never said we weren't going to make the payment. We said we were only going to pay that which you collected, because otherwise you're taking out a free cash, and you don't want to do that. But, so, but, but here's the so, thing, Bill. Yeah. If that's an obligation we have, then we have to adjust the rest well, of the budget. The budget. obligation is a policy. It's not a town meeting action. It's a policy. So that's the it's thing. A policy it's a, it's a that policy. was voted on and signed by the sitting board of selectmen. If Correct. you follow that, Correct. so so it is. Be, it's become a policy. The board of selectmen in 2011 said that payment is to be made. So we just ignored that. No, 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 no. Because it was an extend. Uh, I brought it to the board for that reason. For that reason, it came in front of us. All three to boards that signed that it. Policy right. due to extenuating circumstances. circumstances beyond right. our control so it being a policy we right. were able to because of the situation change that for right. this particular reason right. only covid it was not yeah. done in a unilateral decision yeah. by the town manager that I was i will a, say in in yeah. full transparency i'm going to yeah. admit when i make a mistake As sitting on this board i did not know that the policy or maybe i just missed it was that we were supposed to make the payment regardless. I thought it was like, whatever comes in, we make. You know, if it doesn't come in, we don't make it. You know, maybe shame on me that I didn't realize. Well, I, I, no, no, no. And, and I, I, I will. Advisory I, committee, I didn't know until Brian yeah. Quinn, right. you know, brought it to my attention. Then I went back and read it and said, oh, yeah, same, same thing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So. But, I mean, I will, I will say I did not think the, the language was that significant, strict in terms of us making the actual yeah, payment. Yeah, and now, and now so, we know. But it's, we know, but, yeah. I, but I think but the reality of that is that we, the, the intention was always to make the payment anyways, um, at least to look what we collected. And then we would have to decide if we wanted to use free cash mm -hmm. to supplement that. Yeah. All right, so, so it was never the intention not to make the payment. I want to be 100% clear about that. It was the issue was we didn't know much we were going to collect, so we, were, we didn't want to make a commitment to making that full payment 
until we understood what that number was. That's all. And again, I fully agree that, you know, if I were sitting in your seat a year ago, um, and I agree, you know, this valuation is based on us making that payment, but mm -hmm. the policy, again, says we will make it, but it does say it's not required. It's not like it's a mortgage and the town's going right. to default if we don't make that exactly. payment, but it is the prudent thing to do, and that's what we're basing our right. future assumptions on. So I agree, you know, taking a year off, you know, was probably prudent or at least assessing to see what happened. Um, again, this became a bigger concern with me yeah. when I didn't fully hear that going forward, it's an automatic process. Right. And that's what, um, you know, what my biggest issue was, is that, you know, we, according to this valuation, are on the hook for giving a million bucks a year. So we should be sending that 250 a quarter and if you know 200 comes from meals tax great and if we got to fund 50 out of the rest of the budget then we got to do that uh, th th that's my issues that that should be our process there, there shouldn't be leeway except for a covid like <laughs> that's right you know well and, and i think that's I, I don't think anybody disagrees with that i think the the whole idea was to take whatever prudent measures we could take at the time right. i mean actuarial studies as you know uh, assume that everything stays pretty much the same, right. you know. So, and this was not the case in this this particular year. So, I want to be 100% clear about that. That we're not, we actually did under the circumstances, I think the right thing. But I, I think, not. I, I will admit to you, I did not think that that we were absolutely, um, well, we were actually married to that payment. But I, we did. I didn't want. I want to bring it back to everybody for, for so we knew what we were doing was was a short term measure only a short-term measure to get us through the situation we had right so so i think it's i mean i think it's been a great discussion on on everyone's end and i think it did clarify like mm -hmm. like it sounds yeah. like i don't want to put words in your mouth but yeah. for you and you know for me yeah. and even you on adcom yeah. and yeah. you know I, I you know so thank you for bringing that up and you know yeah. keeping on and i think we're all clear now i think we have a clear path forward right. um even for 2021 right um so I think we need to look at this policy, though, if we need to adjust anything. Is this so? What you're saying is this is the board's policy. It doesn't have to go back to town meeting to vote on. No, this is this is a policy. I think it should go to the same boards that signed it originally, okay. and have all four boards weigh in on it. But I think the only really adjustment would be uh, that the language would say, unless extenuating circumstances where the, all the boards, you know, determine that we have to take a pause. Yeah. I mean that's that's and that's clearly what happened in this instance in yeah. reality. But I do think that. Um, that fortunately, it looks like because we are receiving some federal aid, we might be able to make the full payment anyways, okay. and that we'll be able to utilize those, that money for that purpose. And it sounds like, if I'm hearing it correctly, we don't need to worry about any kind of reserve fund or anything because this was no. just a one-time yeah, thing, a one, and it one it's going into the investment, and everyone's comfortable with that, correct? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But do, does, do we want it? Does it should it go to free cash or should it just go into? It's, it's well, no, it's not going to. It's yeah. not oh, going oh, to. Oh, oh, yeah. I thought it's, it was going to go to. Free no, cash. No, it has to go to free cash for this year because because we don't have a method or means by which we can transfer it out until we go to town meeting and do that. But do we need to clarify the policy? What happens if we co collect more, for example? Because well, it is kind of, is, well, it, is it gray or is it? Well, the issue is the, 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 the policy only sp speaks to the issue of making the OCK payment. Okay. All right, so it doesn't speak to anything beyond that. So if it doesn't, if we collect more than that, then it goes back into the town's coffers, but I think. And is that the, spelled out in black and white in the policy, though? I don't know if it's. I don't. I didn't. I don't read think far, it is. So I, I think that might be a part. Down. But the, but don't forget, we also have another obligation, and that's the roads. The roads. Right. Yes. So right. so so whatever's left over would conceivably go to the roads, or if we thought that we needed to do more, then we could then make an additional payment to the, um, to to from free cash to the roads as well. So it's you know conceivably, but it's not black and white in the policy, so it might just. I think that it needs might to be need addressed. a little bit of. of Sharpening of the pencils and taking yeah, my, my only two cents on that again. You're, you're um, the arc payment is its own animal, and its funding from meals tax is a nice to have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how you use the meals tax money above and beyond that really has nothing to do with the arc payment. Right. Like you, right. the, the right. town should be committing to the arc payment. The right. meals tax should mostly fund that, and you obviously account for it separately because in the town report. Yeah. You show what the meals payment is, and That's you right. show what OPEB is, and you show what you've done to roads. So mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I think they have done that. I, I just think the town wants to make sure we have the commitment to that ARC payment as long as it's not. Yeah. You know, well, whatever. it says right in the COVID policy, too. even though it's not a le it's not 
legally right we're not legally obligated we have we our policy says we are going to do it right so we still broke the policy even though it is not legally but our whoever was sitting on there and between town meeting i mean that meals tax came before the town three times before it passed and one of the ways they got it to pass was like hey guess what we'll put this money to this use right. and if it's not the OPED, then it's going to go to roads which yeah, was, think, which was great right. yeah but we violated our town See, policy I, I, we, but no, i disagree no, with you um, we didn't I, st st I mean, I, read it did you read it no Donna? wait a minute oh. yes yeah but we didn't violate it we we came to it the uh bill it's came in front of this board and we voted as a board to just bypass it okay it wasn't i don't right. consider what i did a year ago a violation okay i think right. that's too strong a word i think due to the situation we were in right. we had to change it a one-time change which a policy that's what a policy is that's right it's a living document. policy is not a bylaw a policy isn't it, it that 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 town meeting it's a guideline the policy is a guideline and and, and if I did it unilaterally, I would be in violation. Right. Yeah. But Bill and, and George coming in front of the board saying, hey, we're in a situation. And it here. wasn't just this board. It was it was ADCOM. It was it also was, the school was, committee that, as well. Exactly. That we have to change this. So ADCOM did vote on that before we did? ADCOM, ad, I, I presented that same option to everybody at the same time. We we're all in the same meeting. because was done. Summit? It, it was a you no. Know, it was done actually as so. part of the uh, the response to the to the COVID situation. Okay. So and we said, look, I'm, you know, my recommendation is that we hold on that payment this year because because we don't know how much we're going we're to collect. But was that on the financial summit then? It was. It was actually not the financial because the financial summit was in the fall. Right. We this had to do this at, at the COVID at the COVID response time. Okay. So it was back in March of 20, 20, 2020. Okay. Which, is, which is understandable. And I probably, see, if I had been sitting on the board, I would have done the same thing. Right. But, 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 but then we come forward another whole year and we do the same thing. And rather than putting it wording in our policy, you know, if, there, if we have to do this, then, you know, I, all I'm saying is we should get it cleaned up soon. Oh, well, because, because now we came a second year and I don't recall this this year when I, I wasn't involved for 2021 but i don't recall this year it being presented to us like we're supposed to do this but be, you know I, I i feel like it was just presented like we don't know what those funds are going to be so i think we just we, we should not budget it again when it probably would have been better to budget it because at that point by the time we came into to this budget season for 22 we had started to see that money was coming in. Not what it had been, but I feel like then it should have been like, okay, now we're starting to bounce back. Let's keep it for 22. And if we can't make the payment, but then I feel like we've gone into a second budget without any discussion. But, but Stephanie, of, there's, there's, of there's, a, there's a significant the policy. There's a significant problem with doing that. If you do that, you're committing to the budget to do that or money that you don't think is going to come in. You don't know if it's going to come in or not. And the problem with that, then you would have had to cut other things in the budget to do that. So I think that what we did was the prudent thing under the circumstances. We're not missing a payment. That's the bottom line. We're not going to miss it. We delayed a payment. We're not going to miss a payment. Yeah. So I think that's the key is that, and, and you know, full disclosure here, nobody, and we're actually $300,000 to the good on this. We're not, we haven't missed a payment on any of it. We delayed a payment. I want to be 100% clear about that. So I think, and, and given the circumstances, that was the right thing to do. And, and, and I think the 22 budget was still a question mark to right. some extent. It clearly I mean, was. look at how much we've changed in the last six weeks. You know, and we did the budget freaking. We didn't expect to be open May 29th. <laughs> yeah. No, that, no, you know? none of us did. I, I wasn't expecting expect oh. sitting here yeah. with the oh. four of us straight across without a mask anymore. I thought right. this was going to be a lot right. longer process. So, yeah. no, I, I think uh, I, I think we went into this with uh, 2022 with, yeah, I think we're going to be able to do it. And as it turns out, we were we are able to do it. Yeah. yeah and and right. Okay, can still, I just say one still, thing to that, still though? It's a financial the, obligation, though, Doc. It, so if it's a financial obligation and we have to cut other things in the budget to do our obligation in general whether it's we we, we delayed one year or whatever that's a financial obligation the town has so even though we're not going to get I, I think like brian said it's not like no you didn't pay your you didn't pay your mortgage someone's going to foreclose 
it's still a financial obligation. So if we know that financial obligation is there and we have to adjust the budget, then we have to adjust the budget. And I think hindsight is... Yeah, I mean, that, that's basically what I was going to say. Again, you know, it's not like, you know, you're saving to buy a pool, right? Right. I mean, right. this right. is true financial ramifications. Just week a pool would yeah, be yeah. nice. Yeah, it would. Um, yeah. So I think if you get, you know, one year, fine. But if you get to, you know, two years because of extenuating circumstances, then I, personally, I think it would be prudent to look at the budget and say, hey, we got to make some cuts because this is a real debt that we well, have. We, you, uh, the, so the true, that, the true test of this whole thing, though, is that we, we had a review by, by, uh, by a bond rating agency, and we fully disclosed that to them. And they said, as long as you get back on track, which we said we would. Right. We yeah. told them right then, we would, and they, they, didn't, they didn't ding our, our bond rating because of that. Yeah. They said, look, it's, we understand it. We understand the situation you're in, and we, and, we, and we agree with the approach that you're using. So there was no, you know, I don't want to make this sound like it's the worst thing that it is. It really was a, a cautious step to take. It was, um, it was disclosed. It was something that we did. And, and quite honestly, we're going to get back on track now that we're back in full, in full swing. Right. So, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. We're in a yeah. global pandemic. No one ever thought that our restaurants no. would be shut down. Yeah. I think we made it through okay. And, you know, if we're going to make the payment and stay on track, I think the next steps... Um, are to revise the policy and you know maybe we bring that I don't know if it'll be ready for next meeting or it's the other one. I just don't want to lose sight of it no well, um, well we can we can make the uh, suggested changes now the only question I had for the board is do you want to make mention of, of the roads in the in the policy as well because that's not addressed anywhere in any of the policies that I'm aware of I think it should be uh, what but, as to the excess money goes to the roads yeah 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 and the excess roads. I think and that's then, the gray then, that we're talking yeah. about that and like everyone the, knows and remembers the history but it's not in writing and yeah. you know if we're gonna have turnover at the town manager's office and you never know you know where else it's it's just good yeah, to, to document and, and I also think it's it's prudent to say that if there isn't enough money to meet the kind of expense that we want to have um, that you can always supplement that with with free cash if you want to at that point, but that's a, again a, a policy. Board. A policy and maybe we decision. spell out that it's adcom board of selectmen right. like, that like which boards decide on that and discuss it. We just right. put it in black and white, and then we can expect to see a fall town meeting article for 2021's payment, yeah. and then in the spring, you know, we'll we'll see the normal one, schedule that we normally see. One, one last thing I want to just mention, make mention of is the fact that the, uh, the while we have been making significant commi commitments to roads over the years, we also should should include language that, that addresses sidewalks. Mm -hmm. So if we graduate from roads into sidewalks, yeah, you know, we should be looking at that. Roads so and, um, and then continue to, to make commitments. And, and I even uh, had the suggestion made to me, which I thought was a good one, was that if we, you know, even if we don't have a need, which I think we're going to still have a significant need for sidewalks and roads for the next several years, but if we don't have a need, that we continue to make a payment into like a road stabilization fund mm -hmm. that will basically take that money and and do the same thing we're doing with OPEB and everything else. So we're, we're retiring our long-term obligations, but we're also, at this time, we're planning for the, for the next phase of those. So I should think that's a, that's a prudent thing to do. It's a good time to look at that policy for that reason as well. And again, 10 years from now, when that obligation is paid off, right. do we want to think about where that money goes yeah. now, or do we wait, you know, seven and a half years for something like that? Yeah, it's, a, it's a good strategic discussion. To have yeah, it really, yeah. that there should be a that 10 years well advance, yeah, of, of what the next step is. So or 12 years. You know, those, I think there's four points then that we just collected to, to take into the policy and bring back to us, maybe for next meeting or the meeting after. Okay. Um, and then I, I just want to involve Chef in the conversation as well, given his yeah, background yeah, he, in So We should be able to present some to you at the next okay. meeting for that. All right. I don't know how heavy that one is. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Great. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Brian. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. All right. Thank you. Good All discussion. right. So um, how fitting to go into our next item, which is fiscal year 22 goals discussion. Um, and in board docs, we have the goals that were collected and compiled by Mike. My thought from here is I still, I think that we can bucket this really maybe into four buckets. So Mike, I, I, um, I'm kind of looking at this in the fly, so I apologize I didn't see this ahead of time. <laughs> but I kind of think um, five, six, and seven could maybe go into four. Uh, thought, and then we keep it, you know, to the four. And, you know, I haven't had a chance to kind of edit this with kind of what I think, so maybe we 
do that, get, get the, if the board has any reaction today to what they say here and what I'm discussing, then we compile it and, um, you know, hopefully with Seth here, because it is his first year, I do want to make sure that we involve him in the discussion and allow him the opportunity to discuss it next time. So I think that would be my plan for what we see here for, again, and these are board of selectmen goals, not town managers goals. Right. These will then cascade down into the goals that we set for Bill. So any thoughts on that process or does that sound okay to everyone? Yeah, to me it just seems like, you know, it's it's what we do but in writing. Yeah, yeah, and it holds, <laughs> like it just holds us accountable. Not accountable, but you know, I have said to Bill and Christina, sometimes I think there's things that we talk about it's through no one's fault, but we talk about things and they kind of die on the vine unintentionally. Like they just get forgot about forgotten about. So, I would love to memorialize some of this and I think it is like the big bucket stock. What, what you know, protect the fine and maintain the financial health. Um, you know, increase communication and engagement. Um, same thing with, with economic growth and then, you know, enhance and improve town operations. So I think those would be our goals and then we can have these kind of sub bullets here to keep us honest as we, as we think about it. But I think the main goals would be kind of those four is, is my thought. So, hmm. um, if I might, uh, Madam Chairman, um, I, I agree with you. I, you know, I was asked when you, as you sent in your goals, you know, don't, re don't repeat things. So down the bottom of your, of your page, I have all the individual inputs that I received from the board members. And then up top, I, I put them into buckets. Um, I didn't want to leave uh, things that didn't neatly fit in because I wanted you to be able to see them. But I think the, those, those bottom uh, several do mm -hmm. uh, get nested in. Um, mm -hmm. One other thing is that I think all of these may fall under the, the umbrella of sustainability. Yeah. When, when you look at the, and I don't want to uh, put words in, but it just occurred to me as I'm looking at your goals that you sent in, when you talk about financial health, that's the financial sustainability of the town uh, operations and future paying down its, its debt. Um, communication and engagement is also the, you know, the, the sustaining um, engagement with the with the community, the citizens' interests. Um, again, the uh, business, town operations. That's all sustaining what the residents expect of us. So, uh, but but to answer your question, I do agree that those bottom three, you know, need to need to move up, and, and you can probably go with the the four goals. The only one, and I think this was your Steph's, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the <laughs> IT vulnerability review to me is not. And again, maybe you have an explanation. I don't know that that's a board of selectmen goal. I think that Bill would roll that into maybe it, department head yeah, goal. Yeah. Um, so that's the only one. My gut reaction was, I don't know that that's us. That was the only one that I maybe want to scratch, and let Bill decide. And maybe he can follow up with you where exactly it lands, so we yeah. don't lose sight of it. I think you know I was happened to pick it up just from watching on television. A couple of different towns, a couple of um, companies. You know, we're we're going through a lot of that now, and it made me think, where are we? Yeah, and our website so, went down, and yeah. what we saw this morning with some of the websites. You know? yeah, like yeah, yeah, different. Okay. Like, like the New York Times was down this morning because mm -hmm. their server, like our server, went down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking that as I wrote it, I was like, I like, I just figured it was fresh on my mind. It may, may be more of a goal for us to push, push yeah. to somebody, yeah. to push to where it really needed to be. Mike. <laughs> yeah. To Mike. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's hiding behind there. <laughs> All right, so that's, that's my thought, and I'll let you guys know, you know, that's kind of where I'm going, that I would then take... I think it's really five and six, and for those at home, it's policy review and town manager succession planning. And I think that I would just move those up, to me, those fall under town operations. So, and I know the policy Good review point. is already kind of underway. I think that's an action item for later today for us to put them all together, but we haven't really looked at the meat of them, the, the actual makeup of the policy, so. Um, One thing you may want to think about looking at is under financial uh, on the financial health is to um, his long-term financial strategy yes yes you know. can you add that one long-term financial strategy and maybe that's like that's CIP be, planning that's too. where you see CIP yeah. you'll see pension you'll see um, OPEB all yep. those kind of payments that you know once those things are paid off what's what's the thoughts mm -hmm. okay. where yeah. do you go from here and you know looking at you know your capital picture and you know, we should be, theoretically, you should be looking at building improvements every 20 to 25 years. 
you know, so because buildings, you know, obviously evolve. And so you, you should be looking at that either major improvements or actually replacement in some cases. Okay. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at. If everyone's okay with that, you know, I think it just keeps us honest. We all know like six months flies by a year flies by and it will just have us have some mm -hmm. specific check-ins on some specific items throughout the year, just as a pulse. All right. So we can add that one too. That, hopefully that's just a quick action item to get that approved for next time. Um, and I can always touch base with Seth offline just to let him know so that, you know, he's had a chance to think through it. And maybe, maybe you can do, I don't know, Mike, if you're talking to him again before that about these, but just let him know where we're at. Sure. All right. That's what I have for that, that agenda item. I think we're good. Next is the assistant town managers update. So I have several items for you this evening. Um, I want to start first with the, uh, you know, the, the, the goal setting. The next step in this, uh, once the board has um, its goals and the town goals set for the upcoming 12 months, is um, you know I've shared uh, your goals as well as the summary of your goals with Bill, um, and in two weeks um, you know he'll be able to come back and have a discussion with the board so that the board and the town manager um, can can agree upon uh, or at least review and hopefully agree upon the goals for the next 12 months. Um, you know, um, the chair mentioned personnel and policy guide. That's uh, a little later on our uh, agenda, but there is a guide um, and I'll get into that a, a little later, but um, and then the follow on to that is that guide incorporates all of the current policies that we have, uh, HR policies. Um, but then we're going to start pulling them out of there and reviewing those policies that are a couple of years, two, three years old now. And at our next uh, personnel board meeting, we'll be doing that. We'll be addressing a couple of those policies and making sure that we, you know, that our now consolidated policy guide is, is up to date with, um, you, know, you know, with everything we need to. Um, I do want to mention, speaking of uh, personnel, is that we, we do have one open position on the personnel board. Um, there is someone who's, who's done a fantastic job. Um, um, Heidi's been with us and, and made tremendous uh, contributions. And um, you know, uh, life has gotten busy, and, and she's uh, um, it's time for someone else to uh, to maybe step in. So you know, maybe you want to address that later. But I just did want to let the, the community know that there's an opening there, and uh, we're going to be you know, posting that as well as other openings that we are aware of in the next uh, couple of weeks coming up to the next meeting so that uh, residents can, can see ways to um, participate further in, in their community and, and their local government. Um, the computer use policy, um, and I apologize for not having that ready because I didn't get it on your agenda this evening to vote. But there is a computer use policy um, that's ready, and uh, there are actually two of them. One for employees. The the last one we have is is uh, quite dated, so it's been rewritten. Um, and there's one that addresses uh, uh, board, committee, and commission members, and um, and then a separate one that's very similar, but it addresses uh, employees uh, with stronger language, like. Um, you're not following this policy, may lead to termination, that sort of thing. Did the personnel board have a chance to weigh in on that one at the last meeting? Um, they not, no, not yet. We didn't have it uh, ready for that, okay. but I'm going to uh, I'm going to share that with them, ask them for feedback. Okay. But um, the you know, the pressing thing on that is that um, as as Bill and Leah and I know, we attended a um, a uh, webinar recently where they where they strongly encouraged that the, your your chief. Uh, policy board, uh, namely the Board of Selectmen, have town email addresses. And that's where we're going with, the, um, you know, for starters, with the board committee and commission um, computer use policy. So the, our board members will have town of Foxborough email addresses after we adopt this policy, and then um, you all sign the, the page two of it. Um, and then, but it also touches the rest of our boards, committees, and commissions because, you know, it, 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 it you know, also relates to social media and those sort of things and, you know, behavior when, uh, when acting on an official basis, um, you know, as a, as a, uh, a town official. Um, later in the, in, the, in the meeting, we'll get to the remote meeting policy 
And I just want to note that um, the governor has filed legislation that that we think will um, will present something that's um, a little more closely aligned with the sort of remote participation we've gotten used to over the last year, as opposed to the policy that you're going to see as an action item later in tonight's meeting, which is very restrictive. Um, but we think it's important for you to take it up, and if you agree, vote on it. Um, so at least we have something if that legislation doesn't pass. And, um, and that, that's all I have for, for this evening. Okay, great. Can I add something quick, kind of tagging off um, Mike's update? I just wanted to, um, I always like to, if I misspeak, I like to correct myself, especially if I speak and the public can hear me, I want to make sure I retract what I said. Um, I did text Mike. Um, we have, we're having a conversation about one of the positions that he had listed, and I qu was questioning it. And um, as I got home and I had a little conversation with my husband, we were, he was explaining to me a little bit how that position works differently up at town hall. And so um, I did text Mike and just told him that, um, you know, I was a little bit more up to date on it. And only because I was questioning it, I, I just like to make sure I on television to say that I, I was I was mistaken. Okay, so, thank you. Anyhow. All right, You're great. You're a fine person for saying that. Thank you. R That's really right. unnecessary, but thank you. That's um, okay. The next one's the town manager's update, and Doc just pointed out the 6.2, the goal setting for the town manager. I, I kind of brushed on that one, but skipped it because we don't have goals for the board, and then that will cascade after. So my thought for Bill's goals are it's the same main goals really as last year is my thought, but feel free to do what you want with the sub goals underneath for our review. Does that, are you it, happy with it, that? It doesn't. Honestly, I didn't realize we were supposed to submit more for Bill because I thought. <laughs> no, we haven't yet. No, we oh, haven't. Oh, no, okay. Oh, You're fine. Okay. No, we didn't. Yeah. Bill will do, the, Bill will do yeah. his own goals and then we'll get them from yeah, Mike. And then we'll, like last year. To say, okay. does this look good or not? I think we've realized, you know, some of the stuff, a lot was accomplished last year, um, can come off. Um, some stuff we felt was a little bit duplicative that can come off. Bill may have different things to add under mm -hmm. one of those four. So I said the general direction is, you know, keep those main goals, but edit the sub goals as you see fit. So, so just process wise, it, it's really helpful for the board to set goals first. Yes. And then I, and then we as an organization build our goals off of what you do. Okay. All right. So, so this so will come with the this, next so, meeting. The yeah, next once you, once you, you're clear on what you want. And then, um, and all five of you agree on that. Then, then, then that I will take that document, and then I'll st certainly work on some stuff in between. But, but there are things that I can then present to the organization and say, okay, these are the things that the goals that the board wants for the town for this year. How are we gonna How are we gonna try and achieve this? So, and then we build our work off of that. So, just process wise, this is the right first step. Okay, perfect. So sorry to jump back on that, Bill, but no, um, fine. just that, needed to and then. Madam Chair, that, that's actually uh, important and the timing is good on that. We're right now in, in the uh, evaluation period for, for all 173 of our town uh, employees. Mm -hmm. And really it comes, you know, set the, set the board goals first and then Bill's goals, which will be nested within that. And then the department head goals, which would be nested within. And the importance there is anyone who's not traveling in the same direction or or in, or not in con, you know uh, you know not uh, within the, the goals and the and the uh, the values of the the board in the town um, is really traveling the wrong direction. Yeah. So this is the way it starts: the board, then the town manager, then the department heads, and then down through the department. So that's the way it cascades, and that's the way our organization progresses forward in the right manner. And then hopefully, like the IT vulner, you know, maybe you can take that to whatever department head you deem fit and let them know it is not one of our goals, but kind of. Came an from opera the board, operational. So. Yeah, exactly. All right. So, anything else? I don't think we've heard your update yet. All right. So, for your um, update. so uh, just a couple things for, for you to uh, to see uh, to, to hear about. One is a very important one, and uh, two important things like right off the top. Um, first is that we are. Um, I've asked the board to convene uh, briefly on on Friday morning because we have finally reached a, a milestone in the sense that the that the fire station and, and, uh, and um, funeral home property in the center of town have, uh, we've reached uh, finalization on the financing from the, from the uh, potential buyer. And um, <clears throat> they've notified us that they're ready to close. So we will have some document, we'll have a document that will be need approval by the board on Friday. So I didn't want to hold up to the nub for another two weeks because they can actually get moving on the project and the sooner they can get going, the better it is for everyone. So I think, um, so I've asked the board to convene on Friday, and, and uh, everyone has agreed to do that. So um, the second thing, this is this is really significant. I just heard this late this afternoon. 
Uh, I got the word from uh, from Congressman Auchincloss's office this afternoon that we had uh, we had requested a 3.5 million dollar earmark in the federal in the federal budget for consideration uh, in this upcoming year, and uh, we were notified that the uh, that the subcommittee on transportation actually approved a two million dollar earmark uh, for a potential funding in the in that uh, in their meeting this afternoon. So, which is great news. It means it's it's two million dollars we can use towards. Uh, potential uh, for utility costs uh, for the for the light at Walnut Street, et cetera, uh, and sewer, uh, all those 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 uh, utility costs that will actually help be paid for by the federal federal government. So that's that's a significant milestone because we it's rare that you get those earmarks, but um, they, they, we made a, a very good case for it. Uh, again, that was uh, Paige's good work along with uh, the, you know, our, our engineering department and public works folks that will provide a good support for that and and all the the letters that we sent uh, in support of that. So I think. Again, a great, a great milestone for the town. Hasn't been funded yet. It still has to go through the House and Senate, uh, and then the President, before we get a final approval of. But at least it's a, it's a huge step in the right direction. Once you make it past that that step, and that's not part of the, the, the you know, just so everybody is clear on this, this is not the, uh, the, the major infrastructure bill that's being debated right now between the House and Senate. Uh, this is a this is a, a surface transportation bill. Which is actually a sub-level of that process, which has a much greater chance of, of getting passage. So, we're hoping that that will be the case. So, really good news on that. Um, and then, um, the uh, also we got a letter uh, just yesterday, actually, from the uh, from the county uh, Norfolk County commissioners, uh, indicating uh, that they are in fact committed to providing us. Um, and this is, it's actually highlighted in bold, it is our intention, always been our intention, to disperse the preponderance of these funds to our constituent cities and towns, uh, meaning that they intend to pass through that money to us uh, as, as much as possible. And it's just a, it's a matter of finding out what the right mechanics are for making that happen. Uh, I don't think that they want to take on the responsibility for the recounting of that money once it's dispersed, which would mean that we would have to do that if they did that. So we're trying to find a way to do that, which, uh, which would be less onerous to them. Um, and so I've got, we've got a couple ideas that we're working on still, and so hopefully that'll come out in the wash in the next uh, next few weeks because we want to get it in before the end of the fiscal year. Um, and also, we just past week we uh, we met with um, the uh, with summer, the summer board of directors met this past week uh, to get the, to get an update on what's happening on that front, and uh, things are going very very well. Um, and they, they're, proceed, they're, they're proceeding very, very well. In fact, we've now uh, drawn a lot of attention from a number of communities across the Commonwealth who have expressed interest in joining the region. So now we're working through those steps to, to see how that will work. Uh, we'll have to uh, revise the, the agreement, um, the intermunicipal agreement for all the four towns that are currently the original four towns and see uh, what kind of steps we'll have to take to, to make that happen. But. Um, too early to, to announce the towns, but they towns and cities for that matter. So um, interesting to see there's quite a quite a bit of interest in uh, in them joining because uh, obviously this is the place that and the state is considering this to be the the uh, the model for as uh, for 911 uh, uh, facilities in the state right now. That's it for my update. Um, where did Kyle go? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. So we'll catch up to him. All right. All right. I would That's like to point out it's so time. human in this room that my paper is like wet. <laughs> um, so, um, selectman's update. I'm going to run through a couple. I've, I've bulleted out a couple here, and then I have a couple that came up after mm. the agenda came out. So, um, I just want to keep you guys in the loop for what's going on. I don't have an update yet, but there is a budget and town meeting process debrief on Monday. So, if you have any thoughts, um, for things that we can improve, like we just talked about the meals tax or, you know, other things. So it's going to be me, Bill, Larry, and then Paul from Adcom. You know, we have the, the budget calendar and we have um, the, the um, you know, the, the town meeting policy guide, the guidebook. Policy Sorry, guide I'm book, yeah. guidebook, struggling yeah. to remember the word guidebook. Um, but there's always an opportunity after each town meeting when it's fresh to say, what did we do different? Like, I think right away, um, you know, taking the explicit vote on the two, on, on the on the um, budget increase for the year, okay. um, have, making sure, talking about how the financial summit happens, getting that scheduled. So just kind of talking about the, the process, town meeting, the budget process, where we can sharpen our pencils and then, you know, be smooth or even more smooth for next year. Although I think this went, went very smooth. There's always room for improvement. So if you guys have anything, just shoot it along to me before Monday. Um, 
The next item is, oh, we did the, the page one. The American Recovery Plan's use of funds, I'm gonna come back to that one if you don't mind. Um, some other events, the concert on the common, first one's Thursday, and I think there's a special like straw hat night, so look on that on social media on the GC's page for that. And then planning board, um, the local, the, the beta group's coming in to present the local rapid recovery plan that Paige has been working on with me and a couple other people. So we're kind of combining meetings that's gonna be presented to the planning board, the Foxborough Common Business Collaborative is invited to attend. That meeting will still be televised. So if you're at the concert on the Common Thursday and you can't catch it, you can go back and watch it on demand on cable access, so they're capturing that for us. So if anyone's interested in that, just kind of a heads up that that meeting is Thursday as well. Anything else? Um, I just wanted to mention a couple of quick things. Um, first of all, I took a ride up to just check out um, Shoveltown. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah. I went. I went. Yeah. Away. yeah actually, Thursday. actually, I dismissed you. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, you know, I just went up just to lay eyes. That's all. And um, everything. It, it was a little bit slow when I was there, but Thursday night was also um, chances of storms yeah, and stuff like that. So it was a little bit slow. And so you know, I. I um, sat with the owners for a little bit we just kind of gabbed um they said doc had been up at some it's up some point he said oh you just missed Leah. Lee was there so um you know i mean it's fresh in the first week unfortunately they had a lot of rain yeah, yeah. so um yeah so but but it was you know it was just just went up just to lay eyes and i mean everything seemed to be running really well and yeah. um so the did, wrist bracelet yeah. really made me feel good too um i had to you know they carded everyone and gave yeah. everyone a wrist bracelet and yeah Beer was good. So. Well, be, well, and so my daughter had gone up with a couple of friends. She said, but we allowed to, I said, yeah, they just want to get something to eat. They're, they're underage. And so they had their underage, you uh -huh. know, bracelets on, but uh, they um, felt like they were, you know, big people by sitting where other people were yeah. drinking. But anyhow, so I just want to mention that, um, you know, it's fairly new and, and, I'm, and I'm sure we'll hear little bits and pieces just like any business with the good, the bad and stuff, but it, w it was just nice to see everything look like it was running pretty well. And on a positive note, I actually talked to a neighbor who said that the fence is nice because now it blocks a little bit of the Conrad eyesore. Absolutely. So, you know, great. it was a very casual conversation, but I think that they were appreciative of the, the fence that ended up going. I, I, don't think you yeah. meant, I don't think you meant to say it that way. The, the Conrad, I saw. Well, <laughs> you're, you're, talking, you're, you're talking about the you're back of the building. Sorry, I don't mean to go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If, it's a, if it's a butting room, I, I, think, I, I just yeah. want to clarify they that for you. see a fence now instead of the back of a <laughs> restaurant. Exactly right. It could yeah. be any restaurant, yeah. the back of the plaza. <laughs> yes. And the other, Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. And the only other thing, you know, I, I always like to bring that personal little piece to our selectmen's update. I just wanted to do kind of re um, remembrance. I know Bill sent out all to all of us that... Um, Rosie Buckley had passed passed away last week. Um, we've gotten to be very very close with them. Jimmy's family was was um, has been friends with them before they were in Foxborough. So um, I just want to say, you know, what a great family. I mean, they they're, they're, they raised their family here, and all four of their children still live in Foxborough. And you know, we have obviously we have um, Assistant Fire Chief Buckley and Officer Buckley and. You know, Bill and Christine are right over at, at Bay Colony, but um, I just want to share um, just a, a quick conversation. So uh, Jimmy and I uh, went over to see Mr. Buckley um, a day or two before the the wake, and um, they were just they were just talking, and um, you know, Jimmy said something that um, just kind of stuck with me. He looked at Mr. Buckley and he said, "You know, we ended up in Foxborough because of you and Rosie." because um, my in-laws were friends with them when they all lived in, Bo you know, in Boston and uh, they knew each other from going to school and stuff. And uh, Mr. and Mrs. Buckley were the first ones to head to Foxborough. And then uh, the Donleys followed, you know, a lot of great families from Foxborough followed. And um, so we were just sitting there and I was just like, you know, that's just what makes, you know, um, that's how then I ended up meeting Jimmy and, and how things work out. But um, Mr. Buckley looked at me and he said, um, he said, you know, Foxborough has been so good to us. And he was, um, you know, so many people had reached out. And of course, you know, I showed up with food and um, my, my mother-in-law's cheesecake recipe that he that he loves. Mm -hmm. And But he just said everybody was so good. And um, just, um, you know, another great family from Foxborough um, making a difference. <laughs> and, um, that he was, 
so appreciative of what Foxborough meant to him. So I just wanted to bring that kind of little personal thing. And uh, Mrs. Buckley was incredible, and she will be always loved, you know, surely missed, and, uh, and will live on in all her children and, and, you know, 15 grandchildren and, you know, just, um, yeah, just a, my little personal something for Slotman's nice. update. Nice, very nice. I didn't realize they had been together for 66 years. I know. Pretty extraordinary. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah, for sure. All right, so we have a lot of action items, but I think most of them are pretty quick. So uh, we've got. Can I just ask a question? I can you come up to the table and give everyone your name and. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, Debbie Stewart, 44, in the Ponset Heights F. I just I know I came in at the the tail end of the conversation about um, meals tax. Thank you, Stephanie, for making me emotional. Um, but before I start all that, I want to tell you, great beard. <laughs> <laughs> I walked in and I said, it's been under that mask, you know? He trims it. He trims it pretty religiously. He's pretty all good. All he about needs it. is a hat. I know. That's well, right. Thanks. Now I have one vote of confidence. <laughs> oh, well. Okay. What can I say? No, I love it. Um, and that's from, that's in Okay. Thank you. Um, I know I came in at the end of it. But I didn't think coming in in my nightgown and my bathrobe would be appropriate. <laughs> so I tried to dress real quick. Um, is there any way that I could, can we go back to that a little bit? Because I don't know how the conversation ended. But um, I have been in touch with Larry Harrington. And I've talked to Jim at great extent and Linda. Because I was very close to that whole process. Um, and I would just like the board to um, think about allowing Larry, who worked on that for years and years and years, to either come, I don't know if he'll come from Hawaii, because we've been talking and he's been in Hawaii back and forth, um, or to send the board his opinion of how this all came about. Well, I, not to go backwards, okay? okay. But yep. I feel like we ended in a really good yeah. spot on that. I think Mr. Quinn agreed where we're going. I think we all, like we said, hindsight's twenty twenty. Right. Like I, I sat up here and said when I mm -hmm. voted to, you know, delay the payment, I didn't realize in there it says that we're still responsible for it. Like, right. So I think that we we did go through a lot of that, and we have the background. I think Bill kind of admits mm -hmm. where there was gray, or you know, I think that we all kind of see maybe i don't know what background additionally you think we need but i feel like the conversation went pretty well we have all of our follow-ups we agree we have to amend the policy there's mm -hmm. four things that we talked about that we need to clarify in there even going down to you know spelling out sidewalks and and stuff so um i don't know how much of you saw it but if there's something specific um, I don't know that we need, to, you know, if Mr. Harrington wants to send something in, he can, but I don't think we need to yeah. reach out to him. Madam Chair, I, th I think, I don't know if Deb was aware of this, but we actually finished in a point, there's a point where um, the payment for 2021 will be made whole. We're, we're right. looking, I did see all that. that. And right. then 22, we're, gonna, we're looking to do the same thing. Okay. So, so and, and the only thing, the only thing that put the fly in this ointment was, was COVID. Mm -hmm. And that we were all concerned that we didn't want to make a commitment to something that we couldn't afford. Right. So and that I was it. That. that was really it. So I think beyond that, um, we've we're back to a position, and, and I think, and I, I recall saying this that that you know we would certainly commit to what we did collect to put it back into the payment, and also on top of that, if we could if we needed to double up at any one time, I also said this too. If we needed to double up, we would do that if we could afford to do that. So we're staying on schedule. Mm -hmm. That's our plan, and um, and that was that was at the time it was. It was it was a it was a concern that we all had that we didn't want to commit to a, a, a cost that that would beyond beyond the town's reach, and uh, now we're we're in a position now where we think we can address it. It's also even more interesting, and you probably didn't hear this, that we we do think we can actually spend some of the the federal aid that's coming in to be spent towards offsetting that payment as well mm -hmm. too. So that even if we don't have enough payment coming in to meet the full ARC payment, which is the annual required contribution, that we would in fact. Um, possibly use some of the federal money to do that as well. So that could put us in a position where we completely made whole for, for 2021 and also for and put us on the track for 22. And I think now we're clear that going forward, even let's say the meals tax comes in at 670 and our payments, yeah. you know, a million two, mm. right. we need to make that up. 
per, yeah. per what the policy is. Or if we're not going to have a discussion about it that all wards weigh right. in on okay. and okay. agree. So yeah. I think it ended on a pretty positive note that right. unless there's specific concerns, I don't no, know. Uh, my, my concern was just that it, I got the distinct feeling that we were going to move probably in the future in a different direction. Nope. No, I don't no, think that's all. what no, I didn't want to happen no, because no. I I sat through those three town yeah. meetings yeah. and yeah. listened to it. And, and, and I talked to you on the phone. I said, I think I said, slow down. I think we're sounding the alarms and that's not what I'm hearing at all. Yeah. So I think I, I, I know what your concerns are, but I don't think that no. that Bill's there, that Mike's there, that we as a board are here or Adcom's there. Okay. So. That's There's what been I, that's no, what no indication at all None. that we were going to change that direction. Okay. None yep. at all. That's all I wanted yep. to know. Okay. All right. Okay. Perfect. Now I can go back home and go back to Amazon. And don't shave off your beard. <laughs> <laughs> it's very You may want to talk to his wife about that, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's on the record. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Michael had one, and I said, oh, it's got to go. It's got to go. Yeah. But he kept it for two years, and then I finally got used to it. When he shaved it off, I didn't even notice. Yeah. That's how much I paid attention. Tell, tell Michael we said hello, by the way. Oh, I will. He's home watching. He goes, I can't right. believe you're doing this. <laughs> I said, why would you think that I wouldn't? Well, thanks you know, for coming nice down. And thank Deb, you, and you're all Deb, doing your, a good job. Your, your passion is... Hey. It, you know. Sometimes I'm better than others, you know? That's why that's I can tell. Okay. When I think, when I think, I was going to say, well, Deb, slow down. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're, I think we're good. <laughs> I, I had to breathe here. Thank God yeah. there was no cops in the center. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Deb. We have to have that on. <laughs> all right thank you Thanks, all right Deb. so we have eight action items some of which have a couple within so madam chairman i just have yeah. one thing for an update yeah. um Sorry. the uh, no it's okay i didn't bring it to you um nicole halen from the the chair of the cult, uh, fox World cultural council wanted to be here tonight but she actually had her meeting so okay. she couldn't come but she wanted to let the selectmen know and i've been working on this project with her for a little bit um that the grand opening of the foxborough art and nature conservation passport so they're Basically, trying to get people out um, into the um, into the conservation spots around town, so the five different ones, and the Boyden Library is going to be doing story times there and everything like that. So it's going to be an online component and also a paper passport. So that grand opening of everything is going to be Saturday, June 26th at 10 a.m. And so she's invited all the selectmen to come, and she will come and explain a little bit more about it on the June 22nd meeting. But then I want to give you just a four-day notice. Okay. To attend all right. That. Awesome. That sounds great. Thank you. All right. Now I think we're really ready for for the action items. Unless Katie, I can see Katie's back. Oh, she's just back for the action items. Okay. The yes. <laughs> so first is. I can go ahead and just yeah, start. Yeah, the, okay. the, the personnel one. Yep. All right. Motion to adopt personnel and po personnel and policy guide as recommended by the personnel board. Second. And under discussion, like we said, this is kind of just putting the policies together. No policies have actually changed. Mm -hmm. We'll look at the meat of those policies next. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Right. Motion to adopt the remote meeting policy for all boards and committees of Foxborough. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right. Normandy Farms. Motion to approve a f motion to approve for one day wine and malt beverage license for Normandy Farms Campground. LLC DBA Normandy Farms Campground for July 7th, August 11th, September 18th, and November 6th, 2021. Any discussion? Well, second, um, for discussion, what are the events? Do we know what oh, the sorry. events are? Did I not? Uh, yeah, they're, the applications are all in here. Oh, I, okay. They have different, like, themed it's, weekends, I guess. Would be. It's similar to the food truck festival that they had last year. Okay. Just with what Leah said, different themes. Yeah, just didn't look. Okay, never mind. <laughs> all right, uh, nope, all those in favor? Aye. Right. Right. Um, Motion, oh, sorry. Ahead. No, I was gonna say CBS Sporting Club, go ahead. Okay, Motion to approve the extended food service hours request for CBS Scene, DBA, CBS Sporting Club for July 10th, August 7th, September 4th, 2021, until two o'clock a.m alcohol service to remain as an existing license. Second. So just under discussion, this is just the UFC fight that we usually say alcohol no. doesn't change, just food and letting them stay in for the end of the fight. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, next we see this annually, the commercial parking permit renewals. Okay, uh, motion to approve 30 
commercial parking permit renewals to expire 6-30-2022. Second. Under discussion, there was one or two, Katie, that just had small payments. Are those all set now? Um, there are three um, businesses that remain. Um, we've between myself and finance we've been in contact with them they know they're either bringing payments in by the end of this week or and they all know they will not get their license unless um they have everything paid so so they know to, to get those, those payments out? in no you, you can approve them. they just approve won't we won't give them to them okay. until they right, until great. they uh until do we have, do we have to mention that in the motion or no no it sounds like it's covered okay so we already took the motion seconded discussed all those in favor okay minutes motion to approve the march 30th 2021 board of selectmen meeting minutes second and under discussion i had sent just super minor those are all i haven't gone checked them the ones that i sent mm -hmm. okay those great. are all me okay great um all those in favor all right. um i apologize oh sorry steph you have to uh, recuse no, you can still vote. We've determined. We've said this before. Yeah. If you didn't go, you can still vote on the meeting. You're just minutes. voting on the like you read the minutes. And you she wasn't even on the board. Yeah. Oh, I March thought it was different than just missing it. I'm sorry. I thought it didn't matter that no, we determined that. I, I I think she can. I think she can approve it. Yeah. Okay. March, March 30th, 2021. Yeah. yeah she was still on the board. That was just That's a couple that. of. That. Just a month or so ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was okay. Chris that wasn't on the board. Huh? Yeah. Chris Seth wasn't. wasn't. Uh, Chris. Oh. Yeah. Seth. 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 Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 How sorry. could you forget it's, me not it's sitting been here, been the here with you? How could I forget that? <laughs> it's Seth I'm thinking of. Oh. Yeah, sorry, Steph. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> oh, we voted, right? Yep, we have to do them all individually. Motion to approve the April 13th, 2021 Board of Selectmen meeting minutes. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve the April 27th, 2021 Board of Selectmen meeting minutes. Second. Any discussion? Just a heads up, I'm going to abstain. That's the one I that's the one I, I missed. But you can vote on the meeting minutes. If you, okay, I, I know. Gonna, I, okay. I, if I'm not here, I okay. always abstain. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those abstaining? Because <laughs> right. right. I just figure because I don't yeah. really know okay. if they're correct or not. You so. don't go back and watch them? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Actually, believe it or not, I did I, watch a little I bit of too, that yeah. one. I did watch a little of that one. That was a long meeting, too. Um, okay. Motion to accept donation of $300 to the COA from an anonymous donor for senior center programs. With gratitude. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right. All right. Motion to accept with gratitude a donation of $240 to the COA from Friends of Foxborough Senior for Tai Chi in March and April 2021. Second. Any discussion? Oh. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then a motion to adjourn. Uh, Madam Second. Chair, before you do that, yes. just want to congratulations to the senior class who just graduated, yes. right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't want to forget that one. And um, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to recognize Kyle, uh, Kyle Rook, who's going to be our, uh, our, our intern this summer, and he's donating his time to, to learn a little bit about local government and uh, happy to have him aboard. So. Choosing to sit in these meetings with us like we That's do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it is cool since we're talking about the graduating seniors to see them on the uh, board Love at the Rodman that. Center. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, to have, to have their banner here, but to have them up there is very yeah. cool. And I think I may be the only one still with kids in school, but just what the staff like from food services to secretary staff to teachers to the specialists doing things like teaching recorder remotely i mean it is just it absolutely blows my mind the year that they had and the successful year they had so um you know just <laughs> a thank you to, to all them too for getting this class through <laughs> and you know i don't know if miracles. you guys remember but last year right after i got on the board ryan graduated and i i mentioned that even though it was different, it was one. It was still yeah. wonderful. They did mm -hmm. everything they could, and you know now these kids have gone through, you know, uh, their whole senior year with COVID restrictions. So, uh, like you said, kudos yeah. to ev everybody who's, who's made made it be okay for all the kids in town. All right. So, a motion to adjourn. Second. Mm -hmm. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>